Ahoy, mateys! This be... Uh, uh, no, wait, sorry. It's not a pirate game, is it? It's a 3v3 steampunk airship combat adventure... thing. Forbidden Skies is a game of strategy, luck, and teamwork. You and the two people seated in close proximity to you at the table are the crew of this airship. A glorious, mechanical wonder of 19th century fictional scientific prowess. It's pretty great, right? Your ship's hull has ten hit points. If it loses all ten, your ship explodes and you die. A nasty, horrible death. And, to top it off, the other team wins, which is even worse. So maybe try not to let that happen. Every time a space on your ship takes damage, put one of these little damage tokens on it. Or use one of these for two damage points. Or these for three. Once a space has three damage tokens, any more damage it receives goes straight to the hull. Except the balloon, space 1670. It can't take hull damage, so once it's got three damage, it just doesn't take anymore. Stupid cheater. Anyway, do whatever you can to keep these things off your ship. But back to the crew, you three. One of you will start as the captain. One will be the gunner, and the other one, probably the runt of the litter, gets stuck as the engineer. Of course, these roles don't really mean anything after setup, but we all know that the engineer's a big dumb duty head. The captain starts the game with three cards from the captain's deck, the engineer with three cards from the engineering deck, and the gunner with three cards from the armory deck. You'd think it'd be called the gunnery deck, but you'd be wrong. After you've been dealt your cards, you can configure your ship's guns. You've got five empty gun slots, spaces three, four, six, seven, and fifteen. Pick two of them to put any guns you want in. Choose wisely, because a gun can't shoot at things it can't see. And what can a gun see? Nothing. Guns don't have eyes. It's a gun, not a potato. But let's pretend they do, just for a second. The line of sight for a gun in spaces 3 and 4 is directly in front of the ship to directly to the appropriate side. It looks like this. Guns in spaces 6 and 7 can shoot at anything in a 180 degree radius along the sides of the ship. And the rear gun that nobody ever uses, space 15, can shoot at stuff behind the ship, like this. When the ship's facing diagonally, this is what the line of sight looks like for front guns, side guns, and the rear gun. Got it? Good, let's move on. After you've oh so carefully selected your ship's guns, it's time to put your player tokens on the shipboard. The captain starts at the helm, space one. That smelly engineer starts in the rear stairwell, space 1012. Right next to the engines. Oh, I just got that. It makes perfect sense now. And the gunner starts at one of those guns you just put down. I don't know why, because he's probably not going to be able to shoot anything on the first turn. But hey, what do I know? It's not like I made this game or anything. Now you need to decide which team goes first. I recommend a friendly round of mud wrestling. But if you'd rather just roll the dice or something, who am I to judge? The first team to place their ship is at a bit of a disadvantage, because you don't know where the bad guy's ship is yet. But hey, you get the first turn, so you've got that going for you. Place your ship on the game board in any space behind your team's line, and you can face the ship wherever you want to. I mean, I don't know if I'd put it that way, but you do you. So, you've got your cards, you picked your guns, you placed your ship. Lucky you! Now you get to play the game! On your turn, every player on your team can move about the ship up to two spaces and take one action. Or if you're too lazy to move, take another action. Why not? You've earned it. You can also play as many cards of one type from your hand as you'd like. You might end up with cards from any one of the three decks, and you can play any of them. But you can't play some red ones and some blue ones all on the same turn. Why? Because I said so, that's why. Jeez, you ask a lot of questions. You also can't move through solid lines. 
That's why some of them are dashed like this, see? You didn't think they're drawn like that just for funsies, did you? The actions you can take depend on the space you're in. There are two actions you can take from anywhere, though. The repair action removes one point of damage from the space. Get out of here, you mean thing! If you're sharing a space with one of your teammates, one of you can use an action to share as many cards as you want between the two of you. The trade doesn't have to be even, either. If you wanted to, you could just give me all of your cards. I'll take good care of them, I promise. All the other actions you can take can only happen when the space has two or less points of damage. Stuff's broke, you gotta fix it to use it, okay? When you're at the helm, you have three more possible actions available to you. You can increase or decrease the throttle by one. That's what makes the ship go. As long as your balloon, space 1617, has two or less points of damage, you can increase or decrease the altitude by one. But you can't lower your altitude to zero on purpose. Zero altitude means your ship's crashing into the ground, which hurts your hull, which, as you would know by now if you'd been paying attention, is bad. Finally, as long as neither of your engines, spaces 13 and 14, have three points of damage, you can turn the ship 45 degrees. If you're in the captain's quarters, space 2, the engineering bay, space 8, though I don't know why you'd ever want to go in there, it probably smells like an old man's bum, or the armory, space 9, you can use your action to draw a card from the appropriate deck. There's no limit to your hand size, so if you really want to, you can just stay in there all day long. Take all the cards! That's probably not a great plan for winning, but hey, you'll have all the cards, so good. Let's see. We've covered repairs, trades, the helm, cards. Okay, I think that's all the actions. Oh, wait, the guns! If you're in an empty gun slot, you can't do anything. Might as well curl up in the corner and reflect on your poor life choices. If you're in a space with a gun token, though, you can shoot at stuff! As long as the stuff's in that line of sight we talked about earlier. There are three different types of guns, so let's talk about how shooting them works already. Sheesh! Turrets! Every time you shoot a turret, it fires two bullets. I'm not sure why. I think the trigger must be sticking. Maybe we should get the engineer to take a look at it. Anyway, to shoot a turret, roll two six-sided dice to see how far those bullets go. The number on each die tells you the range of each bullet. In this case, I hit the bad guys for two points of damage. Take that, you duty heads! Roll the 20-sided die to see which space on their ship takes that damage. But if you roll a 16 or 17, the balloon only takes a maximum of one damage point. Cheater. Damage from turrets works a little different if your ship's right next to the other one, depending on your altitude. If the enemy's altitude is lower than yours, you can't hit anything but the balloon. And as you'd know already if you'd pull that cotton out of your ear holes, turrets can't deal more than one damage to the balloon at a time. Cheater! If the enemy's altitude is higher than yours, though, you can't hit the balloon at all. So, if you roll a 16 or 17, just roll again. Cannons! Cannons are dangerous, both to whatever they're being shot at and to whoever's shooting them. But if you're into that kind of sadomasochistic thing, listen up! Cannons can only be fired at targets of equal or lower altitude. So make sure you yell at your captain really loud if he lets the other team get higher than you. Hey! Fly higher, stupid! When you shoot the cannon, roll the 20-sided die and deal one point of damage to the space you're in. But if you think that's bad, wait till you see the other guy. If you're right next to the other ship, your shot hits even if you roll a one. If you're two spaces away, a five or higher makes contact. At three spaces away, it gets a little tougher, because with anything less than 15, your cannonball misses. You just took a point of damage for nothing. Way to go, genius! At four spaces away, you may as well just forget about it, because you need to roll a perfect 20. When you hit a target at the same altitude with the cannon, roll the 20-sided die again, and give that space three points of damage. 
if they're at a lower altitude, give the balloon three points of damage, and roll for another random space to hit for another three points. Ha-ha! <laughs> Destroying your enemies is so much fun. Flamethrowers! The flamethrower can hit targets one or two spaces away at equal or higher altitude. Roll the D4. The Mighty Ducks decide to go to graduate school. Uh, I mean, roll the four-sided die. If the target's right next to you, you're going to set as many spaces as the number you rolled on fire. If the target's two spaces away, subtract one from your roll. When you hit, roll the 20-sided die to pick the first space you set on fire. For the rest of them, pick adjacent spaces. And for the purposes of the shipboard, adjacent means any space bordering the one in question, whether it's a dotted or solid line. Except the balloon. The two stairwells, space 5 and space 1012, are the only ones it's adjacent to. Cheater! For every space you set on fire, put one of these lovely little fire tokens on it. The flamethrower doesn't deal any damage right away, but you don't need me to tell you that fire is bad, do you? Oh! And I almost forgot about the harpoon. The harpoon's a special card in the armory deck. When you use it, you put the card face up next to your shipboard, put a harpoon token in the space you're standing in, and roll the 20-sided die to figure out where you're hitting the other guys. If you roll a 16 or a 17, just give the balloon a point of damage and throw the card and the token away. And call that harpoon a nasty name for failing you so miserably while you're at it. I always thought Gerald was a particularly dumb name. Go away, Gerald! If you roll anything else, though, put the other harpoon token on the corresponding space. Now, if you're sharing a space with a harpoon token and your team's the one with the harpoon card next to their shipboard, you have the disengage action available to you, which discards the harpoon card and removes the harpoon tokens from both ships. You can also disengage an enemy harpoon with a toolbox, but why would you have one of those? It's in the engineering deck. Blech. So, you've all taken your actions and moved around a little. Your turn's over, right? Wrong! Now, we move on to the resolve phase. Look at the turn reference card to see what order things happen in if you get confused. It's okay, everybody's good at something. First, the fire. Add one point of damage to all the spaces on your ship with a fire token. I told you fire was bad. Next, if neither of your engines has three points of damage, move the ship forward a number of spaces equal to the number on the throttle. And for the slightly slower crayons in the box, yes, that means you move backwards if the throttle's negative. For the purposes of ship movement, diagonal spaces count as two. Round down. And yes, smarty pants, that means you don't move anywhere if you're facing diagonally and your throttle's not at least two. If one of your engines has three damage tokens and the other one doesn't, turn the ship 45 degrees for every point on the throttle in the direction that engine's propelling you. So if engine 14, the right engine, has three points of damage and engine 13, the left one, doesn't, the ship will turn clockwise if the throttle's positive and counterclockwise if the throttle's negative. And for the other engine, go the other way. That makes sense, right? The words sounded better in my head than they did out loud, but you know what I mean. You're a smart person. Well, mostly. If both engines have three damage, the ship just doesn't move. Next, the harpoon. If there's one active, move both ships one space closer to each other. If at any point ship movement causes the two ships to occupy the same space, stop moving! Disengage the harpoon if there is one, and resolve as follows. When both ships are at the same altitude, roll for a random space on both of them and deal one point of damage. Then move whoever's ship isn't resolving their turn away a number of spaces equal to whatever movement's left. Or one space, whichever's bigger. If altitudes differ by one, the lower ship's balloon is dealt one point of damage and move it away a number of spaces equal to whatever movement's left. 
if altitudes differ by more than one, just keep moving as normal. Nothing to see here. Move along. And if you're supposed to stop moving on this space, just stack the ship with higher altitude on top. If an altitude change brings two ships on the same space within one altitude, resolve the collision before you do anything else. If your ship runs into the edge of the board, guess what? You just crashed into a mountain. You lose one point of hull damage and your ship stops moving. Oopsie daisies. Next, look at your balloon. If it's got two or three points of damage, lower your altitude by one. And if that means your altitude is zero, lose a hit point from your hull. That'll teach you to be more mindful of your helium supply, won't it? Finally, roll the 20-sided die and see how it stacks up against the number on the calamity tracker around the outside of the game board. If you don't beat that number, draw a calamity card. Calamity means bad, by the way. Whatever the card says affects your team, and you discard the card. Advance the Calamity Tracker, and now your turn is over. Time to let the other guys move toward your inevitable demise. The best of luck, though. And that's how you play Forbidden Skies. Enjoy losing horribly to a far more experienced and better-looking crew. When you get confused later, don't feel bad. Just come watch this video again. Or, better yet, learn how to read and open up the rulebook. Have fun now!